Kamath Hotel is a stock which has been in focus in the last three or four days. There have been some uh, deal exits into that name and that uh, stock has done well. Yesterday was down 3% but before that it's done well and today almost recovering that entire 3%. The management is now joining us. Mr. Kamath, director at Kamath Group of Hotels is uh, with us. Mr. Kamath, thank you so much for taking our time for us. Uh, just before we talk about the hotel industry, can you tell us that few days back there was a big deal in the company. Uh, who has exited? and uh, what essentially has happened on the shareholding side? So uh, we had a partner with us called Clearwater Capital Partners who was a fund and they had invested in us but now that um, the fund cycle came to an end of a couple of years back they've been wanting to exit but they found it a good time now so they have exited now. Right, uh, so basically their lock-in period was over and they wanted to encash it. Correct. Right. Uh, let's talk about the hotel industry as well. So in the last two years, uh, do you think the supply in the hotel industry has stopped, especially in the luxury hotel segment? Uh, a lot of uh, supply has stopped and that's the reason why average occupancies and overall occupancies in the hotels have increased? Overall, there is a turmoil in general in the industry considering the erratic nature of how things have been going for us. I mean, we are in the business of entertaining locals and tourists alike. But unfortunately, due to various uh, rulings like this 500 meter judgment and other things, so much uncertainty that definitely it has affected the future projects and even the operations of current projects. So there is some uh, general turmoil which has uh, affected the, our industry. Right. Overall, uh, you know, if you look at uh, the hotel industry in the last seven, eight years, you've had a lot of international groups coming into India, setting up big hotels. Uh, do you think that most of them are not pretty successful and that's why now that capex may stop? No, it's not that they were not successful or they were successful. It's just that looking at the ultimately hotel is a service provider. If there is a service demand, I will be able to provide. Just as any other chain who is there, if there is no demand, how will we serve? We are basically catering to the economy. We don't, we support the economy and cater to it. We cannot uh, do anything beyond that. Right. Uh, let's talk about, uh, you know, what's happening as far as tourist data is also concerned. So you get these airlines data, you get the railway data, which both are pointing out towards great inflow uh, within India as well as out of India. Uh, is that a positive for the hotel industry? The improved tourist uh, movement in India is attributed to an excellent improvement in road and airlines. Because of that, even small town people can visit centers across the nation. Earlier to travel, you had to go only to a metro city and then take a connecting flight. But today, B town, even C towns, I mean, recently you look at Varanasi, which earlier was not even on the map, but thanks to all the activity happening there, it is now considered a major airport. So these kind of connectivity improvements will enhance domestic tourism. And we in commerce always believe in our domestic tourism more than international because we Indians love to travel and we always have a reason to travel be it religious be it celebration but India is about celebration and that is why I think you know the domestic tourist will not uh, abate right can you tell us about your properties have some of them been impacted by the 500 meter rule Definitely. Our flagship Mumbai uh, was affected initially. Uh, our Pune Hotel is still affected. Our Nasik Hotel is affected. But um, by and large, our properties like Lotus Konark in um, uh, Orissa, our Wits Bhuvneshwar, or be it our Mahodadi Palace in Orissa, none of those have been affected, nor has Fort Jadavgarh. But uh, uh, we are recovering we are, because some of this is a matter of remeasurement. Some of it is a matter of, it was a knee-jerk reaction, actually. If you look at it, what has ha impacted the industry in general more is a knee-jerk reaction which after the dust has settled people have realized okay we made a mistake let's remeasure and it's happening right can you just tell us about uh, you know will industry adjust to it will there be some uh, changes that a lot of people would make and uh, they would adjust for the volume bit I think this shock to the economy, people are not realizing its impact yet. Uh, a lot of people are going to be jobless, a lot of people are going to further get stressed in terms of loans they have taken, in terms of people being unemployed. I'm talking about whether it's a proprietor or whether it's a guy working. Everybody's taken a home loan and looking to a future career. But looking at the kind of uncertainty that's there, I think overall we need to really uh, look at what's happening. I don't think it's as simple as looking at it from a very myopic perspective of liquor. It's a much bigger picture which I think uh, everyone needs to grapple with. Otherwise, there's going to be a small wound that's going to fester into something big. Right. Uh, can you talk to us about the company's financial performance? There have been some losses over there. Uh, what is the main reason for these losses? Uh, overall, we've been battling through a down cycle, as you can see. There has been some improvement in key markets like Mumbai. There is this more like uh, it's a stagnation yet, but it's not. It's not a bad stagnation. At least the bo occupancies are fairly buoyant, and uh, there have been improvements in operational efficiencies. We, being an eco-friendly group, uh, pushed our staff to come out with even more creative solutions because of which we can see a one CR reduction in our HLP. 
we can see other benefits which have come about so i think it's time where everybody look and see how they can get more efficiencies by investing a little money in terms of you know the latest technology and getting that kind of roi right so you know one of the key issues has been debt what is the current debt on the books and do you expect it to slowly come down definitely our entire endeavor is to reduce our debt and improve uh, you know the debt ratio so that it helps our shareholders and us all together and also reduces the stress which we have uh, been going through in the past so we have reduced uh, some amount of debt and our current balance sheet will show the exact figure which will come out in uh, some time right in terms of interest cost you know it's annually about 60 70 or crore so assuming it's a 500 crore debt with a 10 11% uh, you know cost it's about 50 55 crores uh, where do you see it or what's the trajectory over the next few years when do you expect it to get closer to 20 25 crores or the debt to become half we uh, expect the interest has already come down if you look at our last uh, quarter uh, results which is december quarter results we have had a interest saving and we hope that uh, in the coming year it will further go down as we repay our debts through uh, improved operational efficiencies and you know other uh, methods so But there was that exceptional gain in q3 was that entirely given to pay back debt uh, that exceptional gain which is there as explained by us in our notes it is because of uh, uh, settlements with the banks which have happened there has been certain right back Tax, there have been certain other accounting things which are basically an accounting it's not a real uh, 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 thing frankly but it is something which is part of accounting standards which we follow very religiously what are the current number of properties that you have are you looking to sell out any properties so that you can pay back debt faster today unfortunately even if you want to sell there is no buyer the market is not buoyant for that kind of thing the valuations don't justify selling and it will not solve any of our problems if we get a good opportunity we will definitely look at it uh, but currently we have nine properties in our listed entity right you know as you said that you know currently there are no buyers isn't it quite surprising that you know uh, you have tourist data which is growing uh, in terms of dollars rates have been as flat as it could be in the last few years and no major project in terms of any uh, you know big hotels or big hotel chain is entering india with uh, you know some massive hotel that they are looking at so if people want to grow and grow fast they would look at m and a opportunities m and a opportunity definitely but today it is the valuations which are a deterrent in our uh, industry when you look at the overall operating and the margins the valuations don't justify the payback so that is where the stumbling block is and the high real estate cost doesn't help to that uh, tourist data uh, definitely has improved but what does the tourist pay as compared to what you buying the asset for right and just in terms of fnb uh, food and beverages do you think that's a important focus area for hotels now which was not a case 4 5 years back FNB has always been a very important case. I mean, you cannot do a good hotel without FNB. Our Fort Jadavgarh or Orchid Mumbai or Pune, all are mice-oriented. That is, meetings, incentives, conferences, exhibitions, all mice destinations which do very well in the wedding segment. So FNB and Kamats is of core backbone is FNB. So we always have had a good FNB focus, and all our outlets do very well. Our South of India's or mostly girls are, ex- are very noted in Mumbai and other places. Right, Mr. Kamath, thank you so much for taking our time for us. Always good to get a perspective from you. The stock is at the day's highest point as uh, the management was speaking to us. On that note, taking a break. Coming back in two minutes, we'll get some market perspective on the other side of the street.